please do not adjust your sets we are in the right place hello everybody and welcome to a new episode of my minecraft let's play and today we're in my redstone testing world this is a new testing world i have recently put together in between episodes to try and play around and have some common circuits that we might want to use in an attempt to try and understand and get better at redstone and you know what I think it's starting to work. So there's various simple circuits and then just some other bits and pieces. There are a couple that I just want to showcase real quickly though. And these are from two comments in previous videos. This first one is from Ascendance and it is a tileable dropper system whereby if we put something in here, it will automatically output everything until all the items are gone. And this was a comment on my mob farm episode where I think you'll all agree we had multiple fails and really struggled to understand how to get things working correctly. So this is a nice little design if you need to tile it in a one by one sort of block. However, there is a much simpler solution. And I actually came up with this one on some comments based on T Chapman. It's a real simple one here. The comparator compares the dropper and then the circuit comes all the way back and this one actually outputs them a lot quicker than the tileable system as you can see there so thank you both to t chapman and ascendance for commenting with your ideas but from one testing world we go to another so as you know throughout this season i have struggled with the amount of iron i have had it's always been a real big issue so i plan on playing around with a couple of different designs to see what i can find is the most efficient iron farm for relatively little effort i kind of want to build one on the floor i always see iron farms way up high in the air so to have one on the floor would be nice and this is my original design and the module itself where the villagers and the zombies are as you can see there is a design by a youtuber called scouse mouse a link to the video is down below in the description but this one i have afk'd at for an hour and i got nine and a half stacks of iron in an hour from this farm now this leads me to a question is there room for improvement so let me make some changes and we will find out so this was design number two where i was trying to stack the modules vertically and I only built one and what I wanted to see here was whether or not I could get them to spawn in the top and the bottom at the same time and that didn't seem to work. In addition, this top one seemed to affect the productivity of the other four. After an hour's AFK, I checked what I'd received and I'd only got six and a quarter stacks of iron. So almost three and a quarter stacks less than with my original design. So back at the drawing board, this is my third iteration. And this one is much better. After an hour's AFK, I actually got 12 and a half stacks of iron, which is a whole three stacks more than my original and double the amount I got in my previous design. And not really much has changed on this one from my original design. What I've done is I've added a zombie into the middle. And what that's gonna try and do is encourage the iron golems to move towards the lava. Because I noticed in my first design, at times they would just sort of stand around in the water and not move for probably about a period of 30 seconds to a minute. So having this zombie kind of attracts them to move a bit quicker and that clears them out of the spawning area and gets them to spawn more frequently. Also, I have added a couple of slabs into the villager areas here. And I don't know if this really made much of a difference but I noticed time to time that the villagers would just get stuck on their workstations and they wouldn't really go into a bit of panic so it's just kind of trying to encourage them to stay on the level where they will actually see the zombie in this chamber over here now i hadn't actually showcased the module design up until this point but i'll just give you a brief look of everything that is going on so we've actually got an etho hopper clock which is controlling some pistons in the final design i've just been working with way over there they're actually coming from underneath because all of the modules are linked up to open and close at the same time which is something i want to incorporate in the final design but this is the zombie chamber in here and what you'll see is it can just roam around here like so and then every now and again the wall will close and that will entice the villagers to go into a state of panic and then to have a break and then to go into another state of panic so that's how the zombie causes the villagers to spawn iron golems so in the actual villager compartment itself we have four workstations and four beds and we need these because in order for villagers to spawn iron golems they need to have slept 
and they need to have worked in the previous day. So I just have four different workstations here. And I've come to realize it's, you have to be careful what workstations you use as some of them aren't four blocks. It can cause the villagers to stand a little bit lower and that can actually interfere and they won't actually see the zombie. And um, this is a bit of an outdated design. I normally have my villager working blocks over here now and this is free so that they can see directly into the zombie. So all in all, I'm quite happy that I was able to take a design and then make it my own. What it does mean, as you can see though, is a lot of slabs is required for this build because we need to make sure there are no spawnable areas for the iron golems, only in the water and in the actual killing chamber system itself. I've done the math and it's a 46 by 46 square area. Of course, we've got some little bits over in those corners which don't have slabs but all in all it's going to require a large area to build indeed so we need to head over into our world finally and we need to find an area which is big enough to house this build so let's jump on and see what we can find all right guys so like i said in the previous clip i have done the math and i have cleared out a 46 by 46 cube here as you can see and i've just marked it out just to double check my maths with some slabs over there i decided to build this sort of in between my base and the village and one of the main reasons for that was it would just be a lot easier to transport the villagers from that village over to here i don't have to worry about too many rails yeah, maybe it's lazy, but hey, I don't care. So the next thing I'm gonna to need to do is do some resource gathering because I don't think I have got a lot of stone. Despite the fact of taking out that entire stone area over there, I then decided to go do some trading and trade all my stone to a villager. Duh. So yeah, we need to go and do some resource gathering and get some stone back and then smelt it all into smooth stone so that we can make the slabs. Let me go and gather up some resources and Get this area slabbed out and mob spawn proof. Okay, progress update time. And this is what we have so far. So we're getting the outline of the cells in place. And as you can see, I've started the slabbing process. It hasn't been as much of a grind as I first thought because I had a lot of stone in one of my chests in my tower from the storage and the work I've been doing over there. So I've just put it into my smelting system and it's smelting away while I've been placing the slabs. So that's one thing at least it hasn't taken quite as long to get all of this in place but we've still got quite a few slabs and things left to place what i will say though is it can be quite therapeutic placing slabs i don't know what it is there's just something about the fundamental boring tasks of minecraft like placing blocks and going down mining that i just enjoy and find quite relaxing occasionally but anyway, let me get back to placing slabs. And as soon as we have done and made some more progress, I will be back with some more updates. All right, guys, we have got quite a bit of progress here. And as you can see, all of our chambers are now in place on this farm. And we have pretty much laid down all the foundations that we need to. So in the middle there, we've got our zombie area where our zombies will be. And here we've got our chambers. I haven't put the floor in over here at the minute because I still haven't sorted the pistons out. As you can see, we've got a little tunnel running down here and through there. And that is gonna hook all of the redstone pistons up together so they open and close at the same time. You see there's another tunnel running over there and one over there as well. And then down here, finally, so that just in case we've got a little tunnel here and this will actually be our item transportation tunnel so as the poppies and the iron fall through the lava from the iron golems dying they will then get transported over here so like i said all of the foundations are in place and it's all coming together quite nicely but there is still quite a bit of work to lay all the redstone and everything down i need to craft up some beds i do have the workstations ready so i can probably go in now and place in these workstations a slight change to the design i showcased in the final version in my testing world i'm actually now putting my workstations here like so and the reason for that was i found that the villagers were still getting trapped in places so the idea here 
is the glass floor will be on this level here like so and then the villagers won't even be able to get up to the top there but here we'll have the beds and then this above them right here will be a platform where they can just uh, walk across and see the zombie right in there so yeah things are coming together quite nicely like i said there's still quite a bit of work to do but it's piece by piece little by little i think the hardest part of this is going to be actually getting in place the zombies and part of that will also require me to go out and do some exploring because i don't actually have enough name tags i need five name tags to be able to name tag all the zombies to make sure they don't actually despawn and at the moment i only have two name tags so we're gonna have to go and do some dungeon finding or some never exploring or, or something along those lines so that we can obviously get what we need in that respect so we're going to need to go and head out into some dungeons maybe try and find some nether fortresses because we definitely need to find some more name tags we need three more in fact so all right i'm just putting the last of the workstations in here so yeah everything like i said is coming together quite nicely the actual chambers and the the, the water flowing is pretty much there now i think i need just need some signs down there to hold the lava i need some crimson gates to stop their the water from flowing and stop them from burning because lava will burn regular fence and gate posts if you uh, wasn't aware of that i wasn't until recently and that's why i used them in my original design but like i said everything is coming together quite nice now it's just a little bit more fiddly because not being creative you can't just fly around and get quickly to the top of something but happy where it's going so far and next up we need to gather more resources like i said so i'm gonna head off and see if we can find some name tags and different bits and pieces and hopefully the next time we come over here everything will be pretty much done and we'll be almost ready to go please disregard the previous comment. And that is because I did some research and it turns out librarians have the ability to sell name tags in their master trade. And would you know it, I just did some quick trading and name tags. So I am going to take me a few of these name tags. I'm gonna take five because five is the amount that I need. Well, that was a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. All right guys, progress update time and the cells are all done. All the redstone is done and we have Started to make things a little bit prettier here. Also that, uh, I'm just jumping around and he really shouldn't be. I really need to contain him. But I have got two of the four cells completed and I'll be honest, this is, this is actually quite difficult to get the villagers over here. And we had a rail system set up from the village. That wasn't the difficult bit. The difficult bit is that the villagers don't seem to want to link themselves to a bed it seems over in here now i thought it might be something to do with that they're kind of linked and set to the beds in the village where they originated from however i'm not sure that's the case because i went over to the village and i actually removed all of the beds from the village i took them all up and they're still not sleeping some of them are some of them aren't but what i've decided to do now instead is i'm actually trying to breed the villagers here instead of bringing them across from the other side so as you can see here I'm trying to get these two villagers over here and here and now what i can do is i can actually throw food in there for them and uh, once they become adults and they start breeding a bit more then that will fill them up so i don't actually have to transport any across from the other side anymore but like i said it's just trying to understand why the villagers won't sleep even though i have removed all the beds and these were the only available beds at night time but uh we'll carry on nonetheless we will carry on trying to work this out and i think maybe i just need to wait the night out so have them just sort of survive the night almost and then see if they latch onto new beds after that but 
For now, I am going to leave them to their own devices. But like I said, all the redstone is done. So let me take you over here really quickly. You'll notice that the they're not actually the leave. I'm not going to activate because the little little villages all, all go in there by accident. We don't, definitely don't want that. But this lever is sort of like a fail safe, so I can actually turn off the uh, pistons like they are at the moment and keep them turned off all the time. So if for any reason we need to do something in the chambers and we don't want the zombie, the villagers running around like uh, mad villagers, then we can obviously turn it off like that. And then down here, I've just put a nice little bit of glass and we can see down there into the etho hopper clock. And there is 20 dirt going between the hoppers, which is our timer. So anyway, we're going to carry on. It's almost night time and I'm going to see what happens uh, this time with everything. Hopefully some more of the villagers will sleep this time around but only time will tell so yeah let's uh let's see what happens all right guys so i am about to finally put in the last zombie into this system i hope and uh, close it off excellent that was I'm not gonna lie, that was pretty that was pretty difficult. That was pretty challenging to get that done. So let's name tag you, my friend. And then finally we need to name tag your buddy who is over here. There we go. All our zombies are now name tagged. We can tidy all this up. <sighs> Alright. All right, slabs are all in place. Zombies are all in place. We just need to carefully deal with this. Let's get rid of this guy first. All right, so let's try and get that guy out like that. Really like my minecart back. Nope. Get back in there, Iron Fred. Get back in there. Can't get out, I don't think, because of the uh, slab. Maybe I can trick him. Hey. There we go. Just need to take the other guy out on this side. Okay, so progress, total progress update. All the zombies are now in place. We have four villagers in three of the four pods. This one is a baby villager. This one here, one of these has just grown into an adult. So I've thrown some food in and I'm hoping that they will breed. Uh, so two more days and we should have all the villagers in place. So I guess I better start working on the signs, the crimson gates and the collection system now ironically the collection system is going to require a lot of hoppers um probably about 16 to 20 in total and that means i need to go mining to find some iron because i haven't got enough hoppers i think i am down to my very last bit of iron. i got two i i got two hoppers in there but literally i have no iron left so I find it ironic that I'm building an iron farm, but yeah, I've got to go mining because I have no iron to finish the farm. But I digress. We're almost there. Everything is going pretty well as we speak. So fingers crossed next time I have an update, it will be to say that the farm is finished and we can flick that lever and put it into operation. All right, guys, all our hoppers are now in place and I've just put in my signage here as well. And down here, if I replace this hopper like so, you'll see I have my circuit ready. And this is circuit we actually showcased off at the beginning of the episode in our testing world, which will just spit all of these out like so. So for in order for this to work now, I now need to fill in why my water stream so we are going to do a block here. Just make sure that that will still fire out the items. Yep, that's fine. Okay, and then we're gonna use our water. And wait till it stops. 
replace with ice, put a sign, and rinse and repeat. Meow. <laughs> So I just did a quick test and as you can see, I have had an item dropped in, in the hoppers and it's come all the way over here, which is absolutely fantastic. So now we just need to put a couple of signs here, which will prevent the water from flowing back down. And then we're going to want to here, put a bit of dirt and grab ourselves some kelp. And then we can make our bubble elevator just here however i do need to go and get again some more water all right guys so everything is coming together now we are in the process of making our fence gates here and then the last one goes there no <laughs> Uh, and now we see what, what comes back to us, I guess. <laughs> oh, geez. I think we pretty much lost everything. All we need to put in place now is the water. And then we're done. Unfortunately, no, now we're going to have to go and get some more buckets to do that. Okay, now we can put the water in. Put one there. And one there. And then, I can't, is that not an infinite source? Huh, okay. That's unfortunate. One there, one there. Now it is an infinite source. No, it's not an infinite source. Ah. Huh. All right, well, it looks like we've got to fill these buckets up and do this three times, three more times. So let me go ahead and do that. And then we can flick our switch. All right, all the water is in place. So it is time to activate Iron Farm. And straight away, we get two Iron Golems off the bat look. And let's hang over here for a moment. And in a moment, we should see, fingers crossed, our first bits of iron popping up. Look at that. There are our first iron ingots from this setup and this farm. So everything is working tickety-boo at the moment um i just need to actually get this flowing into some form of storage system here so i should probably actually turn this off again for the moment and then we can get that in place and then we can obviously do some afk in here so let me get this storage system finished off and then yeah i think we're about done Woohoo! All right, so very quickly, I've just knocked together something for the time being just to get the iron flowing a little bit, just literally into two double chests here. We're going to be taking the iron, but eventually we're going to be going into a big storage system here and it's all going to be flowing through, but there you go. All our iron is flowing through already quite nicely. I think it's going into both of the chests, probably flowing in too quickly for that first one to be able to um, keep up. We might have to do something with the repeater just to slow down the pulse of that items because if they're going to flow into that one it's not particularly going to be very good for our system but for now our iron flow is well and truly on its way our iron golems are serving their purpose and it won't be long before we are well and truly swimming in iron which is quite a big relief like i said before we've been struggling throughout this entire series so far for iron so being able to farm it now like this is um, absolutely fantastic. We just need to work out and sort out this, obviously, this iron system here where it's flowing over the hoppers too quickly, it seems, to be able to pick up. Maybe we have two hoppers on each side because, I mean, let's face it, now that we've got enough iron, we can definitely afford to be putting two hoppers on there to maybe catch two hoppers on each chest. Or, like I said, we just changed the timing 
on the circuit down below. And as you can see, things have changed a bit since our last cut. Um, yeah, so we've built up this entire kind of storage system kind of thing here. And uh, it's been a while since I played Minecraft, but as you can see, we've been collecting almost two chests now full of iron, and I've actually got all my poppies coming through to this end. So all of this, these chests here are for pure iron storage. And I'll be honest, that last cut that you just saw was from way back on January the 25th, and today is March the 8th. Things have just been so crazy, and I've not been picking up Minecraft, unfortunately, recently to be able to do anything, but hopefully things are going to be a lot better now, and we can actually start to make a little bit more progress, because I think what I've come to realize with building this farm is that bigger is better. I think through a lot of this season, I've been building stuff, which I said to myself, okay, well, this is good enough for me. It will see me through. But you know what? Part of Minecraft is about challenging yourself and building some really big bits and pieces. Why is that Iron Golem scar spawned outside the farm? That's... He shouldn't have spawned there. But yeah, so I've come to the realization that bigger is better and I should really be challenging myself. So... And that's kind of why I've, in this episode, I've tried to build the biggest and most efficient farm I could. And I've done so much testing around that and I eventually came up with this. So I think in time I will be rejigging my melon and pumpkin farms because I really need to start thinking about doing some better trading and stuff. We need to head on over there and we need to finish the lumber yard. I've been away for such a long time that it's just crazy and I've got so much that I need to catch up on and um, get on top of here. But we will do. We'll get back to it now that things are starting to slowly return back to normal. But for now, guys, that is going to bring us to the end of this episode. Thank you very much for watching. As I said, it's been a big delay in between not only taking the last part of this video, but also to recording this final segment here but also since the release of the last episode. Hopefully we'll get back on track real soon, but I appreciate your support. Thank you very much for sticking with me, and until next time, I've been Ock, you've been awesome. Bye!